So good morning, everyone. I hope you can hear me. Uh, I'm not going to go upstairs because I think this is a very informal gathering. But um, thank you so much for coming. I guess it's too early. Probably people are having their own commitments. Uh, and I think we are outside of the schedule as well, just in the PDF shows. Well, in any case, I'm Anya from the IGF Secretariat. And the reason why we wanted to make this informal gathering is to continue what we started e at the Geneva IGF, which was to see uh, what's happening on the level of the youth engagement at the IGF. So in Geneva, we had a quite a good number of people present in the room, actually impressive number of people present in the room, and even more, the content was um, impressive that was delivered at that session. So at that time, the youth requested a couple of things which were very concrete. We tried to kind of go through details by running a couple of public consultations after that meeting. And um, I think end of July this year, we did conclude a couple of, um, like a call for public input that unfortunately did not result in a, in a good enough, I would say, number of, um, of youth organizations and youth individuals that submitted comments, although the, the quality of the received comments was excellent. But we kind of wanted to pause a bit the whole summarizing and creating plan of action until this meeting, because it was very close in, in November. Um, and I was kind of hoping that we will have maybe even more people here, but it would be good to see maybe from you, since we are such a small group, how are you engaged as young people in internet governance, first of all, in your local community, and then, of course, um, speaking also on the regional level and on the global level. And I think that would help also the Secretariat to understand better your perspective and then what are maybe the views that we should, we, which we, we should build on what we received on that public call for input in, in the summer. Just to maybe summarize for you what was received, uh, the young people called for a so-called mentorship program, which was a very ambitious uh, request, I think, that we just wanted to, first of all, clear with a wider group to be sure that this is the standing point and, and um, kind of compromise attitude of the of the wider group interested in the stake youth stakeholder of youth engagement and, uh, and of course of the young people. They also called for effective communication platforms and they called also for developing mat info materials that could um, help them to explain the whole process but also the substance. So that is something that the Secretariat of course doesn't have resources to cover but I think we're very fortunate to have very good a group of friends, the community is quite strong and supportive. So if maybe you would comment on this to see what are your views, we could maybe, actually we have a year uh, in front of us until the Berlin IGF to actually produce maybe a concrete set of actions and implement them until Berlin that would result in increasing the number of young people that are involved in internet governance. So, Marilyn. Anya, it's Marilyn Cade. Um, I'm going to um, uh, um, make perhaps a fairly strong point of order comment about a concern I have. Um, I happen to be deeply aware of what's going on because I'm involved in a, in a number of ways, but it's actually very obscure to most people who are participating and come to ICANN. Um, on understanding the work that has happened to date. And for instance, the analysis that we did uh, with the participation in a bottom-up way that identified there are four or five different models, uh, even that information is not broadly, um, it's available, but it's not uh, easily accessible. So it seems to me that one thing that would be very helpful would be to think about a sort of a a high-level PowerPoint presentation that's fact-based that gives examples of what's in place today. So for instance, for, and I'm just going to do this very quickly, for instance, at IGF USA, we have had youth involved in different ways. We don't have a specific youth program, but we've had youth involved in organizing their own workshops as speakers on main sessions, etc. And I think since there's no one-size-fits-all, um, I think it's really important to kind of start out with a, a kind of a just a little quick survey of what's going on. The second thing that concerns me a little bit is when we use the word 
the youth movement is asking for or youth have asked for this. We have a microcosm uh, uh, of the entirety of uh, youth across all of the uh, all of the NRIs that exist. Um, we have some that want to be engaged with the national IGF and we want some that want to have a separate uh, uh, identity, sort of like there could be an elders IGF and a youth IGF and a women's IGF, et cetera. And I think it's, it's important to kind of go back to first principles and make sure that anyone who is expecting to use the IGF brand, it is a brand associated with the UN, does accept adherence to the core principles, open, inclusive, et cetera. And if an exception needs to be made, then it has to be articulated as an exception, if you know what I mean. And then put that out for discussion. Um, I'm just going to give a, an, act, an active example. Dynamic coalitions are not required to be, they can be a, a birds of feather group. But we don't, meaning they don't have to have all stakeholders and et cetera. They have to have three. But, but they could get started and grow. But I think we have to figure out what the core principles are. That if you, you, if you say you're part of the IGF family, maybe we, and maybe we need to start examining whether it's sort of an umbrella term, but here's the core principles that everybody um, knows that they need to adhere to. Thank you, Marilyn. I do think that the principles, sometimes I like to call them the values, the higher levels that we stream to are very important and that's actually the framework within we should all, uh, we should all uh, behave under. I actually, um, what we faced since the last IGF is the growth of the youth IGFs that are developed under the principles just as national and regional IGFs. So last year at the IGF 2017 in Geneva, we had nine of them. Today we have 14. So that's a significant growth in less than one year. And I have to say that it's even more impressive uh, than ju just that number uh, of growing youth IGFs uh, when you actually see what the teams are doing in their respective communities. And it seems to me that that number will grow and continue to increasing based on the number of the newly emerging kind of multi-stakeholder teams that are approaching the secretariats to learn more on how they can establish the youth IGS. And this meeting also here in the past two days have been approached mostly by young people to ask how can they formalize their enthusiasm to, uh, to work on internet policy and um, create that expertise. And so one of, one of those that actually is running those excellent processes is Yanis is here with the Youth APR IGF and Fredipta is also here from the Indonesian Youth IGFs. Would be good if you could quickly maybe just share your views for those that are listening to us. Uh, what was that? Because I saw the flyer, for example, and I followed online and I think it was quite impressive. But I'm wondering you know, whether there is an interest in the country to fund those things. And in Azerbaijan, for example, that's what I learned at this meeting. Yesterday I met, I actually, actually met with senior government officials that are working very ambitiously on developing specifically a youth IGF. Even though they have a national IGF that's quite successful, they want to establish that. And it's so interesting to see that the senior government officials are actually working on something developing explicitly for the young people without interfering in the bottom-up processes. I note your comment, Mary. <laughs> Thank you, Anya, for, uh, allowing the, uh, for allowing me to, to speak. My name is Predipta, and for the record, I am the coordinator of Indonesian Youth IGF, which we have uh, just been officially recognized in 5 October 2018. And we did a national dialogue. So together with the national IGF, we have a national dialogue uh, 
with the topic of youth with participant it was also youth we had like around 20 to 40 youth participants from high schools and university we discuss about hoax cyber bullying we have discussed about false uh, fake news on natural disaster as well as uh, hate speech so um, during the session itself we introduce how youth pe young people can engage in internet governance and the establishment of Indonesian youth IGF is the platform that they can use to convey their uh, inputs comments critics suggestion to the stakeholders because at the moment we from the coordinate the OC of Indonesian youth IGF are part of the multi-stakeholder adversary group of Indonesian national IGF so any issues any comments that that given by Indonesian youth can be directly conveyed and and in fact we are currently drafting and uh, summarizing the result of the discussion to be brought up to the government and the relevant stakeholders at this moment and this is also the vision of Indonesian youth IGF establishment we will we do not want to be seen as another uh, civil society organization instead we want to be seen as a forum that helps many CSO many young experts many uh, young government official to be in the same platform to have a discussion on how youth can be engaged in various way I mean we are welcome with any initiative from uh, any youth movement other other than that we have now I mean like we have I mean in global level we have digital grassroots we have youth uh, YCIG and we have uh, together against cybercrime with their youth initiative I mean we can collaborate on all of those I mean, and, and, and from my perspective Indonesian at IGF is not uh, an organization or not uh, an entity that do the advocacy by themselves but we want to hear from the youth at the grassroots level what do you want how do you want us to shape how do we shape the internet governance together that's what we have in mind and uh, however however the internet governance ecosystem for youth in Indonesia is not really shaped yet they know that there are some issues on internet but they don't know that the it is actually part of internet governance so we also have a plan to do some capacity building and some knowledge awareness that you are also part of uh, internet governance so we want to find a local champion we want to find a local agent that can help to spread the issue on internet governance so it will not totally be done by us it will be helped by our local champion students from high school students from university this do those, those those people those young people can help us to spread the news and we are will be waiting for their inputs and comments in shaping their internet governance in Indonesia I mean that's the vision and our objectives in Indonesian youth AGF thank you um, this is Yanis uh, so the secretary for Asia Pacific regional IGF ended and uh, so <clears throat> but Jenna here with me the Namishan ambassador is actually the organizer of the youth IGF part uh, so well but APR IGF starts in 2010 and since then we, we provide a platform actually to have the youth IGF to be in parallel with us so since then it's almost like 10 years next year will be about 10 years uh, and then uh, so since then we, we always have this youth IGF that we support and so uh, it, the budget actually falls under the APR draft budget as well so we provide a good uh, support to them so to make sure that it happens um, and also the the ambassadors carried it out so I think it actually starts is started out more like a capacity building effort to 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 provide some uh, trainings to the youth locally uh, to be able to participate in the APR draft itself uh, and these years we will start to integrate actually more of the youth participants into the APR draft as well so they would not only be in their own sections but then we'll actually have some role play before they can role play a specific internet governance topic so that they could actually participate in some of the sections in APR draft and also we have some uh, mini town hall sessions since we have the synthesis document for, for APR draft we hope that they can actually contribute to that as well so that's why we would have some uh, pre-exercise with them on that and then they can contribute to the APR draft so we see that as more like a integrated effort to, to actually make sure that they could uh, streamline to with the APR draft and, and not only within their youth I draft sections uh, I'm not sure if Jenna you want to add 
anything as well about the youth IGF. <laughs> Okay, so I'll add some more about the details in my IGF sessions. It's like this summer I went to Valois to, to organize the YIGF for young people from Asia Pacific regions and we have some young people from Valois too and also some students from Australia and Taiwan. And we have some sessions about um, we have ideal wall sessions on the internet topics that we usually have, including um, internet access, human rights online, and etc. So that it's a platform for peop uh, young people who are attending the YIGF to um, interchange the idea so we can brainstorm more um, uh, on our opinion before before at uh, like get prepared because we are parallel with the APR IGF so that we can actually come up with some concrete idea from a youth perspective so that we can voice out and advocate our opinion in APR IGF in the town hall sessions and we actually have some uh, mini town hall session it's like a, a preparation sessions in our youth IGF um, so that we like a capacity building sessions for young people attending YIGF to make them more prepared to um, voice out our opinion. And it's like um, when we attending the session, it's like uh, really good because we can see that the difference in Asia Pacific region, we have really different concern because like Asia Pacific is a really diverse area and region. And I could say that like, for example, students from uh, Australia, they have more concern about gender equality, but students from Vanuatu, maybe they have high concern about internet access. So it's like a good chance for people uh, from different economy to know about youth from the same region, what's their concern? So it's like a good opportunity for us not to only have our stance or our opinion voiced out in APR AGF, but also get to uh, connect with youth in the region. Well, thank you so much. I think we have, yes, five minutes to wrap up this, but I. There are two things that I think are very important, and that was for a couple of months a subject of our discussions until we finally agreed on a couple of principles. The first one is that what Indonesia Youth IGF said, we don't want to be seen as just a youth association. And I think that's very important. You are multi-stakeholder in nature. And I'm just looking at you here. There are like six of you that are sitting there, and I'm pretty sure they're all probably very close in age, but at least that's how it looks to me. But I'm pretty sure that some of you are probably studying to be engineers, some are studying to be doctors, some are studying to be um, in political sciences and so on. So there is already a substantial difference when it comes about your stakeholder aspirations. And that's what we agreed on, that the way how the youth IGS are multi-stakeholder is that you have different backgrounds involved. Just because you don't have your still professional affiliation and the organization doesn't stand behind you and of course the substrate of your work doesn't mean that you don't represent a stakeholder view. So that's one thing that um, took us a couple of months to, uh, to agree on. And uh, the second one is what just we heard from the YAPR IGF is that um, there are different interests for different students coming from different regions. And that really is a reality, not just of the youth IGFs, even of the, uh, the among national and regional IGFs. It's just that depending on where you live, um, your really on geographic locations on your regional position, your interests, um, substantive interests really vary and they are dependent on your location. So I think that's also very important to underline and that the youth IGFs are no exception uh, compared to national or regional IGFs or any other organizations just because they are young and they're just starting their profi professional career. Uh, we do have one publication that we did with the IGF Secretariat, we did it I think earlier this year. And so what I would like to do is to update that publication because there was a significant change in the number of NRIs that showed up later. But also it seems to me you're upgrading your work more and more. So even the existing um, youth IGFs that are described in that publication should be uh, maybe updated their descriptions. So you can 
find it on the website, but it would be good if you could also be involved maybe in, in public calls that we're organizing bi-monthly to tell us more about what you're doing. And that, that's the way actually you're raising also our awareness and kind of prompting us to do certain things. And the second thing is to build on what we started from Geneva. So there, there, are, th there are those results of the public call. As I'm saying, it's not a lot in terms of the quantity. Uh, when it comes about the quality of inputs, I think it's important. And if we could just expand on that, make sure that we did a proper outreach, because I think that was a bit difficult to do with the youth IGFs, as we still are not in one place. It's still one mailing list where I can reach you, or I'm not even familiar with everybody. But I think these face-to-face -face, um, meetings do help. And if you could also s help us to spread the word, the Secretariat will work on uh, how to help uh, to improve the youth engagement in the IGF. That would be very helpful. And uh, to see whether those inputs that are received, uh, as summarized on the IGF website, are actually real reflection of the wider community. So there is my contact, or the contact of the Secretariat on the website. And just that you know, it would be really good if you could let me know, just send me a quick email. Uh, just that I know where are you to know who, to, who should I contact to ask for what you're doing. And that would be very helpful then for us to make sure that we actually did due diligence when it comes about the bottom-up process. So that's all. I think we have to leave the room because uh, there is another session. Did you have any uh, la last questions before we wrap up, please? Anya, this is a youth session, right? So can we do a selfie together? Yeah. Can you what? Can we do a selfie together? This is a youth session, yes, right? Yes, no, yes, okay. yes. <laughs> yeah, okay, well, if there are no comments or questions, thank you very much, and I hope to see you around the venue until the end of the day. Yeah, yeah, that's